Join my speech in three, two, one. When you walk in the streets of Japan and ask any individual as to why they don't have babies and why do not they even want to have babies, it's because they don't feel that there's sufficient play or like benefits in place for them to even have those babies. Let's understand when you look at states that have high birth high fertility rates, you realize there's a lot of infrastructure, there's a lot of economic benefit that allows people to be comfortable with having babies. Let's understand this debate is not in the 1800s or anything other than that. This debate is an increasingly capital and industrial world where people's primary focus is now directed towards being productive and economic. Understand the context, right? It's very simple. Right now, the states that are suffering due to low fertility are the ones that are uh, the ones that have their future of productivity in risk in question, right? Which means because of the fact that they have a low working class age group, it means that there is over reliance on older people, right? Which means the moment in time these older people are passing away, they do not have a good productive group to fall back onto, and that's a significant problem because we tell you these are the same states who have developed their economies on basis of working groups. This looks like Japan, this looks like South Korea, who are increasingly successful due to the fact that people are working and providing for that work. Which means we tell you the incentive of these things lies in two factors. This number one is obviously the protection of their economy, which is when we tell you that these economies primary ones are not the fact that people are able to work full-time jobs and stuff like that, is the fact that there should be an existence of working class to begin with, right? I think both sides can agree that the working class is obviously cru crucial for the states of the development. Right now, we're going to tell you why. In a second there, the states not only need human beings to exist, they exist these states need functioning human beings to exist, right? We tell you, due to the due to the defamilarizing effect, we are unable to give functioning human beings because they do not have family structures that they bring them to, which means that you do not have a good productive uh, working class at the end of 10 or 20 years, right? And that's very really problematic, right? Understand that the stance that we want to take is that we want familiarizing effect uh, to push people into even having the incentive to have babies. Because right now, they can, we tell you that these states, particular states, would ever be able to claim the benefits of having a population as long as the prerequisite to even have these developmental growth is the incentive for individuals on ground to even have babies at the first stage, right? And we tell you that as long as it's the uh, incentive, the prerequisite is de dependent on incentive to have children, it can only be solved through giving these people incentive, which can only be solved through familiarizing effect. Because understand the defamiliarizing effect is only applicable when people have children to begin with, right? They do not cater to people who doesn't have children. And we tell you uh, who doesn't have children and probably do not have enough incentives to have children. And we tell you in low fertility state rates, these are the population that is in the majority instead of the minority, right? This is exactly why you have low fertility, but I think it's pretty intuitive. The counterfactual that we want to present to you is that we want familiarizing effect in forms of tax benefit, in forms of financial uh, financial benefits that we posit onto people. Why is this extremely important is the fact that these financial uh, incentives are the ex like a significant push for working class whose entire goal is to have enough money to survive day to day, right? And we tell you this cannot be solved through defamiliarizing effect because the main concern that goes into people's minds that they cannot even give afford to give birth to the baby to begin with. They don't care about the post-infrastructure development benefits that come as long as they feel like the baby cannot even come out of them because they do not have enough money. Understand that this image is a very simple ground, right? As long as we can prove, and whichever we can prove, that this is the best way for the states to develop, push incentive and allow people to even be open towards familiar structure of women. Okay, let's look at the state codes. Okay? Firstly, who are these low infertility rates and what are the causes that goes behind it? We tell you number one, it's on the increase in capitalism that allows people to be forced into 95 jobs. Because we understand that individuals on ground are not always reluctant, it's not like 
There's two, there's three forms of individuals that exist on the ground within these countries, right? We tell you that a certain one of them are the ones that prioritize care over babies, which is not to say that they don't want babies at all. They just feel that they're not in a financial place or position to have those babies to begin with, which is why there's a reluctance to having those babies to begin with. But secondarily, it's a cultural shift in where people are like very, uh, like poor being movement in South Korea, where people are very against the idea of having marriage and stuff like that. But that also comes into the generational uh, loop, right, where they feel like in the moment in time they have babies and they neglect those babies, there's going to be societal pushback, which is why they don't even want to deal with that social loser and they no longer want to engage that. We tell you only true familiarity and effect that we can target all of these groups. Understand now, who are these? Uh, the first group of people who are the ones who want to have babies but cannot. They exist on two players, right? Parents who have the incentive to take care of the children but can't because they're a working class population, right? We tell you that because of the fact, because I understand no parent wants to push out a baby out of their body in order for them to keep neglecting them. In this current status quo, you hear a lot of conversations around gentle parenting. Why is that important? Because a lot of generations have suffered from neglectful parenting. I myself have never spent more than five years than my mom because my mom was a working woman and PhD, right? This is why I do not know what it's like. I was always in daycare, passing work to move right. I think that allows for individuals, which means right now my priority is to have children when that children is not neglected and being catered to, right? And that's one. But secondarily, are people with nuclear families and very, because the only reason they do not want to have children because its affordability is significantly high. There's a high barrier of entry and too expensive. And the only way we can prioritize them is through giving them. Understand that the main uh, idea that we want to talk about then, that is the only way that we target major groups, which means that we target the maximum productivity of this uh, policy to begin with. Understand in the current circle, we told you there's reluctance to have children. Why? Because number one, this idea is that you have a children and you continue to neglect them by pushing them into daycare is against family values, which are very crucial to South Asian countries like Japan and South Korea, the ones that are primarily facing this issue to begin with. Why is it so? Because of cultural segments where mothers and grandmothers will tell you that, oh, you are such a bad mother for neglecting your child to begin with, which is why people don't even want to opt into this to begin with so that they don't even like have to deal with this pushback. We tell you the only way that you can incentivize these individuals is you give them tax benefits so that you don't, they don't have to talk, uh, care or think so much about being afforded or money to begin with, but secondarily you give them extra benefits over and over. Please understand at the end of the day, as, they, as long as they are able to spend time with their children, children that are born out of love, right? As long as they're doing that, they feel fulfilled in their own parenting role, which means their incentive to have a baby is fulfilled. Under their role, that doesn't happen because they are always having to rely on back into their working class job and not being able to give time to their parent. And the only benefit the government gets is not tax benefit, no financial, it's just having partial the daycare, which they might have to even pay at the end of the day, which means it's just a burden over a burden for these parents. The impact we gave you is very significant, uh, very uh, simple, right? Number one, this is the only way you can make it appealing for people to have babies. Number two, you give them financial benefits, which is exclusive under our world. And lastly, you do not allow them to suffer from backlash. Uh, and again, we think this is the only way you can help them and reduce child poverty after children are born. For all that reason, we come to. Uh, About 10 months ago, my aunt gave birth to me. 
She was supposed to give up her job, and her husband was supposed to travel up and down to our country in different states because they only have one income. What does this mean? This means that she has to stay at home, she has to cook for the baby, she has to clean the baby's diapers, she has to wake up at night for the baby, and she's unable to find someone else to do something. What do we give to you outside of the company? What we give to you is they have a maternity homes that will probably take over these jobs. For example, stay up at night for the pee. For example, cook uh, nutritious meals for your children, clean your uh, children's diapers, uh, clean the house for them, and teach them throughout all the time. So in this sense, we tell you that necessarily all these things will be taken care of already. All the quality assurance of quality services that they try to provide will be provided with even more capacity on the side because we ensure the certainty of government funding versus an uh, unsponsored uh, forms of assistance on the side of government. So the extent that they cannot do this to you, we tell you that the economy what I'm going to do to you here in today's speech, I'll tell to you about the problems that come um, from women having children and why they don't have such as they have children in status quo, and I'll give to you the solutions that come from defabilizing services and we'll weigh out specifically why this defabilization is more important than a uh, group of money, which we don't even think is doing as much as possible because they it. First, the few responses to side affirmative. Affirmative tells you that this is a capital and industrial world and productivity is important. We agree with this and we fit this argument because we tell you that there is an aggregate increase in an individual woman's capacity to develop smarter children and contribute to the economy through their own work when they are not diverting their attention to something else every day when they are at work. For example, if I'm dating now, I don't want to have to think about a kid that I have at home because then I don't have to be I'll probably lose this round. But if I don't have a kid, I can probably debate properly and give a better round. So we tell you that this is a similar um, sense of productivity that you get from the working class and women like that because people who want to have children will and will. It's the people who don't want to have children that are the delta and we resolve this reason for that children because now we can focus fully on their work and focus fully on their child. It's better for the child too because now they have quality time with their children. We tell you that the idea of money on their side, the premise for why people and parents actually lose money comes from parents feeling bad because they want their children to do well. The reason why parents want money is because they think that they can use this money to give their children the best education, the best food, the best clothes. On our side, we are guaranteeing this, uh, this idea of education to and clothes to all these children and we are guaranteeing these benefits. This actually diminishes the importance of money on that because now we don't actually need to use as much money as we can say to buy things that are already given to your children. We tell you that necessarily these parents can then actually um, access our mobility quicker, even on site of the screening. The question in this day is that the idea of time is not as much of a benefit as side uh, of the side of the might try to give to you if that time is mingled with frustrated parents who want to neglect their kids but tired parents that come back to work. We tell you that more likely the parents of our side will not neglect their kids because they are not so tired, they will look forward to their kids more. And for two reasons we tell you that they are better they can. One is the idea of government sponsorship that will be able to see who they have, and second is also the idea of side of the that they cannot guarantee this sponsorship and probably parents who don't want to see they have will see worse they on their side. And the reason why worse they have service to exist because the government does not come as much uh, money into that. So first of all, this is very popular. We tell you that there are two big conditions for side activity. One is to solve the pertinent issue of low fertility rates on our sides by increasing the logistical cost of taking care of the child. And second is to give social and economic rights to women and children. What does this mean? They can facilities funding caretakers, funding labor costs, and foreign domestic workers that can replace the job of a family that frees up quality time for a parent to interact with their children. What are the problems and why is there low fertility rates? So there are four reasons for this. The first reason is to increase conservatism from far rights and women, probably because there's extreme labor workers in the the examples that they give to you, like South Korea and Japan, where many male incels that do not want women to have agency, do not want women to get married and have kids. Second is also the idea of increased education and progressive employment. Because the women see that they have more career potential nowadays, they are less encouraged to give birth and to their careers and the cost of the agency. They don't want to sacrifice their time to, uh, that they will be using to produce things for society, to take care of children. They, want, they don't want to tell their boss that I want to have a baby and then their boss will not promote them because probably if the, the boss doesn't want to take the cost of their time. The third is also the idea of like um, it's cheaper for us to have kids on our side and it, um, because we tell you that in this sense they have more agency in the workplace and that actually means that they are more likely to work in work than they are more likely to work in the focus of the world and as such they are also more likely to have more assent to having children because now they view children as more important. It's the key mechanism in this round because the difference with better facility feels a lot is not the materialistic idea of money, it's the incentive and the image that women have of the prospect of having children and whether it's a positive thing or not positive thing. We tell you that because women think that they have spent more quality time with children on our side, they probably look forward to the prospect of having children even more, and this means that fertility rates are likely to increase. Four is also the idea that tax benefits are unlikely to help women pick up in, like even outside affirmative because it, it's very difficult for you to figure out a child as a lot of women coming from. 
since you have people involved in emotional network, a lot of mental work to be able to do after your child. For example, they constantly take care of their child when their child cries and wakes up at night. They have to like drive back on two states to go and uh, overtake their child. And this actually means that fertility rates are children down even more. Even if you subsidize the law or uh, the fuel for a car that drives to two states, you don't subsidize the amount of time that it takes for me to drive to two states. I'm still damn sick from driving 300 kilometers per hour. So the second is also the idea that women are scared of a lot of emotional and physical pains. They tell you that this means that whatever money you can give them, do not subsidize what they're emotionally and physically capable of having to take care of their child so much. This alternative is very difficult to find. The only alternative that you can get is when you delegate this responsibility to alternative KPS or alternative professional therapies that we will train on our side. We have to fear that we have to train this case and you're likely never going to be able to do their job well. We tell you that this is particularly uh, important because in status quo, most males do not uh, necessarily want to have out of the workplace as much as you don't want to be together with the and we're able to solve this with their own life by providing, uh, by like, taking away this responsibility from the parents and giving them to someone else. So, because like, the, these kids are like, what are the solutions on our side and why do women have more incentives and capacity to be able to treat their kids well? The first is because we're likely going to make first day and facilities cheaper due to economies of scale. This means that it's actually not a lot of income that's available for a male, and this gives you the benefit of having an uh, increased supply of women based that's probably going to be symmetric on both sides. Second is also the idea of political will to do so because we have more damage of wealthy families who have incentive to help. It is because the rich families are the ones who are probably going to be most interested that they don't actually want like, to help um, or to take care of their children. And so mates and child care that takes up their time will probably need to have more incentive to fund these mates and child care. And as such, we have more private funding as well, we have more government funding. Likely, this funding will need to better be uh, better to work as well. So this is also the idea of emotional cash going down because the emotional cost and the idea of emotional flow of side of the does not uh, actually it's not actually solved by the solution. You see a common solution is on the other side. Whereas on our side, we guarantee the certain benefit of quality time. That is important as a prospect and motivates the city. Because now uh, women are more happier with their child. They see it as a positive process and they see that they have to see how their child develops. So we tell you that why is this important and necessarily why is this important the ground. There are a few reasons as to this. The way in which their financial expenses are not as important as ensuring that the woman has more emotional and physical capacity to take care of the child. This is because money and subsidies will come in other ways. For example, if the government subsidizes the transport of government stuff, Education. We tell you that it's more important that women are able to make money while their kids are there because this actually directly accesses side of government spending or cheaper costs. This also means that like, the idea of stress and incentive um, of like, your children or the generational trauma from your parents being angry and tired of your child still exists on side of government. Whereas on side of negative, there is more certainty that these parents will be less angry at their child because now they are going to have more energy to spend with their child. So we tell you that necessarily women will be benefiting even more and they will be less in a good relationship to say that why. Responsible for my child and have less time to sacrifice for the potential. We tell you that necessarily this means that in the parents' perception, they will want to achieve even more because they think that they do stress and they are going to be able to afford this mental workload and they find that this is the delta that allows the middle class people to do work to boost the industry. We necessarily tell you that we're also willing to train all the people who want to represent their child who's this very own symmetric and we say that childcare will not be exploited precisely because there's going to be good work safety regulations and good government capital. As such, side of the road.
about a positive incentive that encourages and empowers women to then start a family. Because if their only concern is that in the instance that I have to travel back and forth, how am I able to then start a family? I think that because other structures exist, such as for example, the fact that you live in a nuclear family means that you can rely on your mother or you can rely on your cousins, your aunts, which already exist in status quo. Exactly how I was raised most of the time, no, not most of the time, but like sometimes I was raised like an entirely for like an entirely by my aunt because my parents had to go out and travel. This is completely fine and all because you rely on the people around you. These already existing structures that exist naturally already exist, which means that the burden then of how this issue is so crucial is then greatly uh, lowered. But on top of that, given that there is no active incentive as to how you are then able to solve low fertility, because the fact that low fertility exists isn't because people only think about logistics they think about how they are able to function in an economy, how they are able to function in a society, how they are able to then function as a human taking care of another child is then left very unfulfilled. On our side, given that these uh, feminizing policies means that it eases the material uh, or any uh, barriers towards achieving a better uh, process of taking care of your child, what this means is that it can include things such as tax breaks, for example, if you want to buy stationaries you, for your child, for their school, you can use the receipt from that stationery and get tax breaks. My mom did this the entire day of my primary and high school life so that she can get discounts on items, right? This is normal. But this also means that throughout the process of raising a child from start to finish that you are taken care of and given some sort of privileges and benefits. For example, buying baby milk powder is that can be significantly cheaper. For example, other infrastructures that exist that allow higher rate of uh, encouraging of higher fertility, for example, a healthcare system that's able to cater towards children specifically, or an education system that's able to cater towards children specifically, is that able to then create it at a much more efficient level because this is the only policy that enables these barriers that exist uh, currently to then be taken down and ease the worries of what it means to be a mother in today's society, right? Note that whatever it is that they see on their side, daycare, access to daycare, all these things can also happen on our side, but the biggest barrier that we have to then take out is the ability for us to then afford. If affordability to uh, affordability towards daycare is a problem, we see that it is better solved because the whole entirety of the process of raising a child gets cheaper, but on top of that, you are able to get economical benefits of tax breaks on top of already getting privileges of raising a child to then ease the process of you taking care of and sending them to a daycare in the instance that you want to do it, right? Because the problem is, it's not all the time that you want to send your children to daycare. Sometimes you want to spend the entire day of the day with them. The weekends are free for you. So that in this instance, even if they say and their policy successfully works, I think that it doesn't cater towards majority uh, of, of what it means to be a parent, right? Moving on to my main argument then, right? Why is it that this is the best policy to successfully increase fertility rates in low fertility countries? I'll tackle this in two ways. First, uh, as to how it is able to in, in, encourage people who already want to be parents. And secondly, how uh, it is able to encourage people who think economically and don't necessarily prioritize uh, parenthood uh, uh, first and foremost. Firstly, parents and people who already want to be parents, right? This means that they already have that desire inside them, but there's a barrier that exists. This can be in terms of resources, capacity, so on and so forth, right? This means that people who want to be parents are actively making the decision and the contemplation to make the best choice. They take into consideration things such as the developmental of their children, the ability for them to provide, and providing the kind of life that they want to be able to give to their children, which means that infrastructures such as healthcare, education are incredibly important, none of which they actually took into consideration or, uh, or care to engage, right? How is it able to then occur in our side? It's because this is the only positive choice that they can make, which means that it eases the entire process of you becoming a parent from A to Z. You are able to then re re realize government is then giving you the incentive that it's actually not that hard for you to be a parent because I'll ease the process for you. Secondly, then, there's an active incentive. What this means is that the active infrastructures that exist is going to then encourage you even more because this gives you the ability to access privileges. For example, parents are able to then have tax breaks on the kind of uh, medicines that they want to get for their children. This eases the process of all of them also getting medication for themselves because then this makes that the, them dependent on their children and the children's dependence on, on them. 
which means that both people or both individuals within society are able to access the benefits of each other because they are important and crucial people within the government. The government takes care of these two people because they are crucial towards the development of the economical and societal life of these people. Last is that you are able to fulfill this idea as to what it means to have a fulfilled parenthood, something that only us are able to fulfill because you take into consideration the entirety of the process, but on top of that, you take into consideration whether or not you are making the best choice. Only this policy takes into consideration and asks the question, are you making the best choice? Lastly, on people who think economically, right? First of all, the people who think economically are going to question things such as the ability for you to get a comfortable life. How this policy achieves a comfortable life and encourages people who may not prioritize parenthood, first and foremost, is because this means that uh, young children are being, are being proposed by the government as some sort of form of investment. What does this mean? It means that government is bringing, bringing tax breaks and the ability for you to have access to a better life by creating a family first and foremost, which means that children or having a family in of itself is a privilege that you can achieve as a citizen. Secondly, that people who think economically are more likely to question on the feasibility of you retaining your money or retaining your resources, right? This caters towards the issue of career women who prioritize career. But the way this is solved exclusively on our side is because what we give is that a better future is then achieved whether it's pre the developmental of your children. The better that you take care of your child, then the better life are you, you are going to achieve because this child in and of itself is going to be able to take care of you uh, at the end of the day. But on top of that, because the, the entire process of resources is eased, this means that a better future is easily achieved. You don't have to worry as much. This worrying then, the last thing of worrying means that taking care of the emotional burdens or the emotional aspects which next tries to claim are then is able to be co-opted on our side and better achieved because this lessens all kinds of worries and all aspects of worries of what it means to be a mother. Lastly then, people like this are more likely to question how well are they able to support their family. Things like this can only be achieved through actual infrastructures, right? Like daycare isn't enough. You have to have education, you have to have healthcare, you have to have developmental roles just uh, the access to therapy and so on and so forth. Only active policies that lessen and increase the barriers to accessing these materialistic uh, uh, impacts are able to fulfill these things. For all these reasons, probably. Look, the amount of tax benefits on both sides of the house are likely to be relatively symmetric. This debate was purely about what kinds of benefits to be give to mothers and fathers on both sides of the house. They wanted to have a universe, a world in which women were likely going to feel immense amounts of fear towards the idea that they were the ones that were going to be relegated to being housewives. They were the ones who couldn't progress in their careers because they would have to constantly take time off to take care of their children. And that was a worse world in terms of creating worse incentives for women to even get married or have children to begin with, but also for the parent-child relationship that you talk about. First question then, about which side better incentivizes women to want to have kids. Because Tiang actually explains that the fear does reasonably exist within these relatively developed societies, where the fear is that women will face the brunt and the responsibility of this child-rearing work. Firstly, because he explained that men are in cells, 79% of men in South Korea believe that they are the victims of gender discrimination, but B, women are obviously going to be the ones who are constantly associated with childcare, with motherly roles, and so they are the ones who are going to receive the burden of needing to take that kind of time off. This was a problem because this was also symmetrically a really important cost for women to consider. As much as the financial stuff was important, it was also about time and emotional labor that was far more efficient and present within the minds of all these sorts of individuals. And the reason why all this was important was because these were probably women that cared a lot about their work and their careers, which is why they even had very low work rates to begin with, right? Because the money was what allowed them to have comfortable lives, to be independent, particularly when they compared it to their friends who were single and were able to have it all in condominiums. It was unclear that their policy of making it a little bit cheaper to have a child in the specific ways that they described was what would directly incentivize women to have children. So, if their claim here is that working class individuals need more money, we actually were able to win on their own metric because we explained that dual income streams with, that would more likely occur on outside the house because we would have more time to go to work for both the mother and the father. That was a world because you know, of cheaper daycare that was probably going to bring more money into the family which will allow you to get more diapers, more, you know, whatever the heck. And as opposed to being a housewife on that side of the house, in terms of affording even being able to raise a child to begin with, we want on their own metric. But even in their best case, as a working woman who also had paid time off, who also got parental leave, their baseline salary was likely to be 
much lower because that woman or that sort of house was unlikely to be able to get promoted up the ranks if she was always constantly taking time off to go take care of her children, to pick them up from school, and what have you. All this is to say that the woman on outside the house likely experienced far more exponential income growth which went on their own measure of affordability. But at this point in the round, we will explain why women likely don't care about financial costs relative to time and emotional costs. On the first level of the financial cost, it was generally unclear that money was actually the problem that they described in these very hyper-developed countries like South Korea, Japan, and Singapore. Families in these sorts of contexts are probably already relatively affluent if you're even considering having a child to begin with. And notice that the characterization they give of having, you know, aunts and grandmas around actually hurts their case because it implies that raising a child is, again, not that financially difficult for most families within the realm. But what was more present and directly proximate was seen the effects of generational trauma that came from mothers being way too overworked within a household context. That came from seeing people die a decade ahead of time because they were so stressed on needing to constantly take care of their child 24 7. You saw the stress lines on their face. You saw the absolute misery of women around you all being relegated to the mere title of mother instead of being truly independent in what they could do with additional income dreams. All this was to say that the stress and the prospect of it was far more present in these minds than potential financial benefits that might accrue on that side of house which is the reason why our counterfactual was better. Firstly, because we had cheaper daycare inmates. This was likely to be the case because of economies of scale, but also because a lot of the rich families in South Korea, for instance, were already used daycare in large number of instances, so there's a lot of political capital that exists such that all the poor working class mothers could also utilize these sorts of services. That kind of political will doesn't probably exist because the government can point to their policies and say, look, I've already done enough in this sort of regard, just be happy with what you have. But secondly, we explained that we improved the economy to a very large extent if more women are actually contributing back into the economy via having an additional income stream. That is a world in which we can collect more tax from the working population, which then goes back into the benefits that we really think are important in the realms. But more importantly, even at lastly, even if birth rates maybe rise more slowly on our side of the house, these were women who were largely able to retain dignity on our side of the house if there was no expectation that they needed to give up all of their independence and all their working career goals just to take care of children on that side of the house. The only thing left standing at this point is the same backlash from patriarchy. Because apparently, right, the patriarchy wants moms to specifically take care of children. But firstly, we can ameliorate a lot of these concerns to a large extent. It is true that the maids and the childcare services will still mainly be, you know, employing women in a large number of instances. I think the patriarchy will be okay with these sorts of things. But secondly, I would argue that there's actually far more backlash on that side of the house. Because in a very reasonable context of how they want their policy to work, they don't just want women taking paid time off. They also want the men taking some responsibility in terms of childcare work. And obviously, men don't want to have to take that time off. They don't want to support the kind of policy on that side of the house. They don't want to receive this sort of responsibility that also is uniquely explained that they'll either pawn it off onto their wives or they'll be angry and backlash this policy from ever existing to begin with. On our side of the house, we don't force men to take up any of the work. Men don't need to take this time off. There will be far more supporters of defamiliarizing policies on our side of the house. At the end of this fact, it seems intuitive to me. If we are talking about the long term sustainability of these societies, we were the only side that was able to incentivize these women to even want to get married and have kids to begin with because there was no expectation that they needed to abandon their life and career goals. That was important. But next, I want to discuss the parent child relationship because they claim that parents really want to spend time with children, but this is obviously not mutually exclusive. You still have night time with your child. Right? You can still have the weekend with them. And the notice, I will flip this point by saying that it's often quality that is far more important than quantity. Because they spend so much time with their child, but that child is something that is like a menial task machine, right? It's all constantly great on you. The fact that you need to always change your diapers, the fact that the baby wakes you up at night and you have no maid to take care of them. All this means is that your parents are ones that lash out, beat children, such that they don't come back on your side of the house. On our side, that quality time comes in the form of playing with them, reading stories, bringing them to the park, which explains why they will come and visit you into the future, but also uniquely explains why parents will have more children now. If their mental health is improved after having their first child, because they generally feel really 
really happy playing with their kid. That is a reason for why they would tell their friends that it's okay to have a child. It's okay to have an additional child in their own mind. They reverse all of these impacts because women feel absolute shit about their lives after having their first child. But next, it was just unclear that most parents in the round really didn't want to spend as much time with their child as possible. I think it is a minority of parents that are able to be privileged enough in the position to become a housewife. Most women still want to work to help out with the mortgage or to help out with the financial situation. You don't have that kind of woman. But lastly, I think parents have a lot of other concerns when it comes to child rearing. It's not purely about the time you spend with them, it's also about sending them to tuition and enrichment classes so that they can have a leg up over their compatriots. All this is to say that if you allow women to work more and bring back more dough for the family, they can also fulfill their alternative obligations in this sort of regard. And this was all important in terms of ensuring the long-term sustainability because then if your children felt that they were loved, even if you didn't see mommy and daddy every single day, the few hours that you saw them every week was intensely valuable and you would want to have more children in the future. why Nick loses this debate is because they refuse to trade off the fact that they have to trade off time spent with their children because the inevitable fact of the matter is that if you are prioritizing your work over your family and you're sending them to daycare, the amount of time spent aggregately is probably going to be less as opposed to us when we are able to better nourish and nurture our family and cause them to at least be functional human beings in the future as opposed to repetitively repeating the cycle of everyone being robotic slaves to capitalism. Necessarily, there are three main issues that are pertaining to this debate, but before that, I'd like to get onto a characteristic clash. They say that they are able to somehow able to garner all of these tax benefits and all of these different things that we are trying to claim. The info slide in and of itself I think is very clear. It talks about subsidies in, related, in relation to caretaking as well as maybe subsidies relating to like daycare etc. I don't see anything that leads me to believe that any tax benefits or anything of the like is able to be gathered extensively more under your side. Maybe standard like each, each, each country has that tax benefit that you are able to claim. However, ours are extensively more because the resources from the daycare which you are trying to put are also, we, we have to fear to claim that that is extensively shifted to us or our set to a proportionate amount. Basically what this means is that we are able to garner better time spent with the family so like mommy is able to like spend time with the kids and daddy is able to rake in bundles of cash because of all the tax breaks he gets or because of all of the paid time off that he gets. Necessarily, the issues that they want to talk about pertaining to like less less successful people and less driven people aren't something that is very pertinent to this because people are people can be su su successful irrespective of having time paid off. In the time that you are actually working, you're putting on you're putting the, in the extra hours and you're making it sure that before you actually have to spend time with your family with time paid off and like all of these maternity leaves that you're able to get, you're able to at least like substantially contribute to the company so that you're more recognized. Three issues then. First of all, we said better handles the issue of the, the issue of logistics. Secondly, whether family fam, familyizing policies inhibit women from being successful in their careers. And thirdly, and the most important one, which said better protects the economy. As it pertains to logistics, they say that on the other side, you're probably going to be like freaking burnt out because you're transiting back and forth to take care of your children after a long day of work. I'm unsure as to why this isn't symmetrical because the fact of the matter is the very same energy which you put in is directed to your work and then they say that they want to have more they are able to have more time spent with their family. So even if you engage on that premise, you already burnt out like shit from work. Now you have to spend time with your family and you're probably not going to do that to an extensive and, and good uh, and good amount. Comparatively on the other side, what you're able to do is have time paid off. So you're getting like the basic minimum, the basic wage that you're getting already, but you're also able to spend time with your family substantially more than compared to that. The disconnect that happens here is insurmountable. Like the mental gymnastics that you have to that you have to assume that suddenly these children are going to be able to be catered to extensively under their side. I don't understand exactly how that happens. More of our logistics. I think Munira extensively told you on the fact that nuclear families is one of the solutions that can be garnered. Not necessarily just because she has an auntie somewhere that she's been taking care of her auntie and everyone else follows the same plan. They're also able to have daycares probably. The tax benefits that we have and all of the things and the, and the costs that we're able to offset allow logistics to be able to be garnered to an extensively greater extent. Maybe you're able to get more money. Fine, fucking give it to you. We don't give a shit you have more money. The fact of the matter is that you're not able to utilize the time that you have uh, towards your family and the util that the 
effect that happens is that you have a buffer of money, but you're not able to necessarily aggregate that to the logistics uh, uh, of like you spending time with your family, etc. Secondly, active policies also also means that the awareness of the society will shift because policy is easing all processes. Society will be more apologetic towards towards like leaves and paid off time from work. We flip the issue by making it our impact by shifting the societal perspective. Necessarily, this means that men under our side don't become dead big dads, they say that because they're okay with making that. They say that men don't want to fucking spend time with their kids. What the fuck kind of reasoning is that? You have to be able to be a participating factor if you're willing to have children in the first place. If you want to have a kid, you probably also know that. I probably have to spend time with my kids, but I'll probably appeal shit when I'm spending time with it. That's something that they're okay with seeing, and I don't exactly understand how any form of controversy is able to be achieved other than maybe dead big dads and moms who are so fucking focused on their videos and having children which have the same personalities as they eat. They care, uh, people who take care of them and they care as opposed to them. So they're not their children, they're just some people that they give birth to just to get fucking rid of the infertility issues. Secondly, whether feminizing policies inhibit women and other men from being successful in this career. This is extremely important because Subhanta and fucking Munira, fucking Munira, sorry, Munira told you <laughs> that the fact is that tax benefits and other op financial benefits allow the societal perspective to shift necessarily. This, this means that there is a trend towards accepting that women will have to have time paid off. If you go and try to talk about that, like systems like the patriarchy and other things already inhibiting women on the hill side, I'm unsure as to how just because you're conforming to that societal structure, the suddenly you're going to be able to have more proliferation in the, in the work field as a, in and of itself. So I told you that when you don't empower people to start families, they're necessarily going to have like their whole life catered around their economic pro 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 proliferation, etc. What side negative assumes is that just because people are focused on their work, suddenly everyone is a bloody millionaire. The fact of the matter is that's not true. Because when you prioritize your work to such an extent, you face things like burnout, you face things like not being able to fucking stand looking at your workplace and stand and, and hitting yourself on a day to day basis. Because the fact of the matter is that when you work back to work every, every, every single day, you're going to be pissed off and looking at your fucking boss's work because you see him like a pig every fucking day and you're tired of working for him. The fact of the matter is, when you have time spent off, you're able to recollect yourself and you become a more functioning member of society because you have time off to be able to focus on yourself and better yourself in your craft. If you're, a, if you're a corporate worker, you can systematically like reformat yourself and like, okay, what are the ways I can approach work in a, more, in, in a better way where I eventually get back to work? You can also have maternity leave, still do work necessarily in different projects and you want to leave, you can ask, hey, can you like give me some work that I can do while I want to leave, it's so taxi. So necessarily you're still contributing to the work. So the way in that it's really simple, women are still able to garner all of the very benefits that they mentioned on the, on the death set because I, I, it's multiply better because they have time paid off, they have uh, maternity leave, which means they can actually focus on themselves. So it's basically like COVID-19. I'm at home, I'm working from home and I'm also contributing to my work. I don't necessarily see that there's something that, that, that inhibits them from being able to be functioning members of the workplace. Third thing and the final issue, which side better protects the economy? I think it's really simple. On a short term, maybe they make it so that the society has more like work ethic or whatever the fuck that even means. Necessarily, they might get short term economic benefits and they might be able to develop the economy to like bloody hell the future in the short term. But long term, people are dying off in these countries and this is something that I fail to acknowledge. Old people don't have the capacity to work anymore. They also don't have the future longevity or the future foresight to, in, to ensure that these, these people are going to be wanting to engage in the uh, familial practices which is what Munira and Zubaita proven to you because they told you that the, there are two forms of people that exist people who already want to start families and people who are like, like don't really want to start families we gather that on the other side you don't necessarily, they don't necessarily prove to you how just because you're going to be able to send your kids to daycare and you don't have any of the benefits that we have on our side suddenly you're going to be incentivized to want to start a family we prove to you that we are able to garner the people who don't want to become family members or like start families in the first place. So on a metric of economy and longevity and likelihood, we're able to far more likely ensure that the economy is able to be able to be sustained into perpetuity, even if maybe there is some short term uh, de de depression that happens within the economy, we ensure that this economy is able to be lasting in perpetuity. Thank you. Sorry for all the speech.
why do you better help capacity for women to have kids? I mean, like, what about all the quality, family time, or whatever? And last thing on the way, like, quality versus quantity, like, the economy, etc. But before I start with my questions proper, here are, like, some housekeeping issues. I know it's fairly messy in, with regards to what we talk about, like, the tax cuts on our side, the tax cuts on our side, and the, like, healthcare, oh, sorry, healthcare facilities, or, like, they have facilities on their side. We think that it's fairly simple, right? As a, the government has a fixed amount of money, they can either do, like, provide this money as like tax benefits on their side of the house or, or they can put this money for example into creating this government facilitated daycare like there's generally quite good quality as you're justified from first and then like that's the real trade off in speed so like generally I think that both sides probably have the same amount of money to put in this policy but so what more you can get out of that or out of that so like just to clear that up so first on why is it that why don't people actually want to have kids in status quo we think that in this particular country like Japan, Korea, Singapore the like affirmative sites like they, are, they keep claiming that it's because it's too expensive for people to have children, especially as working class people. Like, first on mitigation here, they're not actually that poor. Just they told you this previously. But it's, it's true that these places are fairly developed, right? It's not as if the aging population is actually hitting their part, that part yet. But insofar as like, there's still like a sufficient number of population for this like older generation, people from like 30 to like 60, even if some people retire as of, like, with, like, retire within these few years, the economy is not going to collapse immediately. Insofar as you believe in this, this also means that like people within these countries who work, who are in part of this working class, aren't actually that poor. Like, at, or at least these people who are capable of having kids, like who uh, currently don't have the incentive of doing so, like they're not actually that poor. And this, this is a fairly substantial part of the population. This is like most of the middle class. It's not actually that expensive to have, have like, sorry, like it's not actually that expensive for, have, for them to have these kids. So, which is to say that there are solution is actually a like, problem solution mismatch. It's not because they don't want to have so sorry, it's not because it's too expensive, that's why they don't have kids, it's because of other reasons that we can explain to you down the match and I will write about this later. So second, like like the, the reason why people don't like the reason why women don't want to have children now is not because it's too expensive, it's because they're getting more educated. They're increasingly prioritizing their employment, their career, their promotion over having kids. This is not this is because like the happiness of for example taking care of a child is fairly speculative you as a working class adult woman, right? You don't actually know how it is to take care of a child. Like in so far as maybe you have had experiences with children, but you sort of know that you know, those those positive experiences of taking care of your aunt's kids for one single day is far more like it's not actually representative of the pain of motherhood that you know that like from personal like stories from your parents, from your personal stories of like other women who have came before you. What this necessarily means is that like it's very hard for them to access this particular benefit as a working class woman. But it's very easy for them to access the money of like having a job, the satisfaction of doing all of this job that you actually love, right? Like for, for we think that most people, like most, most women do actually like doing work, you know. It's not as if like they yeah. hate going to work. Like we think that most people also just go to work that they enjoy like to begin with. It's just to say that doing the job and the job is something that they already experience and therefore it's very proximate to them. And this like all of this independence, their money, their ability to do stuff that they love means that it's very hard for them to trade this off against the speculative benefit of having a child. In so far as like this is an issue for women who have like who have kids and will need to take like uh so in so far as this is something that they consider, what is act the actual solution is that on our side, right? By allowing them to have children and like put, putting those children in day and therefore allowing these women to continue to go to work for as much as for as long as possible for as much as possible without having to compromise on stuff like maternity leave, for example. This is because uh Alright, uh, the, the reason why this is the case, especially for women, is because we recognize that the patriarchy oh, like, sort, of, sort of subtly influences how we view like women and like which sort of labor they need to like perform, right? Like this also means that like if, like women who like have kids in like who say they want to have kids, for example, in the workplace, are far more likely likely to be like discriminated against insofar as they're like less likely to be given projects, less likely to be given promotions because the company already see see them see them as like your son. Like a, a fake, a fake pot, right? They are not going to be like producing that much for the company. You might as well not be able to do that. And this is extremely detrimental because these are the women who like like need this money the most. Where women are being the more more, more, more vulnerable individual in this particular case. And like uh, that, this also means that like this like eventually like when they face out like face out of being employed, like their child and their family will be, will be the only thing they have. They are they will be extremely vulnerable to, for example, like financial like uh, lack of financial like financial dependence on the husbands, for example. And this is very important because like you know we think that women actually need this particular.
physical freedom. Uh, and and this disproportionate expectation of healthcare on women is extremely bad. But even if like you believe that finance is a big issue, like on their side, like let, let's say they get more maternity leave and therefore more women are incentivized to go work. Let's say that's a bad thing, right? Like we better able to, yeah, better able to solve this on negative because women who can still work and therefore get this sort of do more of this work and get more of this promotion are better able to provide the dual income stream that we're talking about. What this necessarily then means is that like uh like more people, like more women are just able to work in the economy. We think that more women are better, like uh, like instead of choosing to take more time off for the child, are better able to go to work instead. And therefore, like there there will be more people in the labour force, which I'll be evaluating on about. Uh, like the way care is simple. The likelihood of this tax tax cut working is quite low. In a lot of places, we have already seen stuff like tax cuts for like oh sorry not tax cuts but like baby bonuses for women, especially in Singapore. None of these have worked so far. Our labour like our fertility rate is still damn low. What actually like therefore like what is the what the proposal on our side that actually changes incentive for people? The second thing that I would like to then talk about is like how we increase capacity for having children on our side of the house. You like uh, on that side of the house what they try to say is that ah no no be like they will be successful even though you take time off. I've already litigated that to a large extent, but more importantly they're like, oh no, you'll be too burnt out to take care of your kids and, and therefore the quality of your like spend time with your kids will be bad. That's not true, right? Like it's a different sort of burnout from the one that we described. The one that we described on our side of the house is the burnout from interacting with a child or they having to take care of the shit labor that they have to do for them, and that's that which then colors your perception of the child and like makes you frustrated with them, right? On our side of the house, we remove that entirely. Instead, when you come back burnt out from work, you like or by being angry or boss, you see your cute little child who's happy to see you back at home, and therefore you feel happy, right? Like you are able to feed them and they're like you are able to feel the emotional fulfillment far more on our side because it's not colored by that frustration. Last, uh, they say that ah no no like men like on their side of the house they are supposedly able to shift society and men now want to spend time with their kids. We don't think that's true, right? The problem is that women are taking the brunt of these things. Like uh like men men might want to spend time with children, but oftentimes we see that what they are doing is actually what uh, like women on our side tend to do. They just come back from work and they see our oh, kid very happy. But like oftentimes women were the invisible labor behind this and they were always subjugated to their particular like frustration. And we what we sort what we seek to do then is to like even out this very we pass this labor off to someone else who is like capable, not only capable of doing this, but also paid doing so and like pro- like you know consented in working for this, which is far better than uh, on their side of the house. Uh, lastly then on the on effort like on affirmative is trying to say like um like this country don't have enough workforce and therefore like why that's the reason why economy should be very important in this way. But we say that actually right, we get more women to work on our side one. Right? A lot of the times these countries actually don't have enough women you know, working precisely because they need to stay at home without children. In so far we are able to increase the number of women who work and therefore increase the fertility rate because there are more women to have children. We think that far better than economy on our side of the house. Let's first discuss about whether women want to even spend that much time with their children. Because our claim here was simple. Most women in these sorts of developed countries did not want to or did not care, right? These were young, talented women in their 20s, earning incomes of their own for the first time after studying for many, many years in high school and university. And so they would not consent into giving it up potentially to become a housewife or a low-level employee. Even if this didn't happen in all instances, it was always the fear that this could happen to you that was significant towards their decision to not have children on that side of the house. On ours, they might, and they could be convinced because we could assure them that you could still retain their jobs. The Hail Mary from third is to say, what about burnout or work? But then this is the context that we describe, right? Often these were jobs which are glorified as really important, gave you material benefits that were proximate towards these young women's lives, and especially it would allow them to escape horror stories of domestic abuse, the horror stories of their aunts and grandmas being tethered financially towards their husbands, which meant that their lives were utterly horrible. And we know all of this to be true. The Korean birth rate is 0.68, and that is after hundreds of millions of dollars was thrown at by the South Korean government into the very policy that they described, because the root cause was never a financial issue. It was always the time that it was needed to be sacrificed to take care of this damn child 
couldn't progress at work. So if, again, the problem was in the affordability, we won on that metric because if both husband and wife could work and bring in dual income streams, that meant you had more money to buy formula and clothes. But it, again, was not clear by the end of substantive that the money financial stuff was the most pressing issue for these families and their decision to not have children. All of our remodels should stand at the end, which goes to show that what was more important was the emotional stuff. But secondly, even for the women that did want to spend time with their children, we were better for them too. Because these were women who understood that quality was more important than quantity. They understood that distance made the heart grow fonder because most of the time they spent on that side taking care of the child was not real parenting. It was boring, tiring, unfulfilling. It just made you angry towards this little beast that would never leave you alone or give you a piece of quiet at any point in the day. And so on our side of the house, we gave them the opportunity to develop actual lifelong relationships with their children such that they would actually want to have more kids, such that other women would want to have more kids and such that their kids would also become parents of their own. So on our side of the house, women were probably going to be convinced to have children because they did not have to choose. They give these women an impossible choice between their career and their social life and these children. That was a reason for why they wouldn't choose well on that side of the house. But also, you could obviously pay for more things like education, toys and whatnot. And this was all important because it wasn't just about time that made these parents feel responsible. It was also about the ability to provide them advantages in life. You were able to fulfill these supposed burdens and needs within the minds of parents. But next, I want to discuss women quickly. Because raising birth rates at all costs seemed to be immoral on that side of the house, if feminization came with the pressure for women to take more leave than they otherwise wanted to, shaming them for not being a good mother if they weren't spending time. Our norms could change the patriarchy in these sort of societies because both men and women didn't need to assume parenting responsibilities. But if a parent had to take on this responsibility, it was obviously going to be the woman in more instances than not. So maybe we trailed off women who really wanted to stay home, they would probably, one, be rich enough to not care about these things, or two, have kids anyways, and the financial benefits that they get from being from getting an additional allowance presumably wasn't that big for them anyways, so we were willing to trade them off for the majority of women in this society by giving them more agency, which allowed them to contribute back towards the economy, fight for their social political rights, which again would go back into tax collection, which would allow them to have more of the money going back into the childcare services, which made them affordable and accessible. Thank you very much for that speech. Housewife, but second rare is that 
somehow in their world by continuing their current job they suddenly become rich enough to give access to health care by giving, even going to the hospital to give birth to their baby and have access to education which they have to pay for college in 20 years or right? We tell you, let's visualize it. I want to have a baby, right? There's two factors that I want to think about first and foremost. Firstly, do I have the affordability in short term and long term? Short term means do I have the affordability to go to the hospital and push a baby out of my bed right now? But secondarily is if I have the accessibility to give, uh, affordability to give this baby uh, a college, a good education. They never get solved under their work because the only thing they want to posit to you is that women only think about the infrastructure. That's true in the very specific cases where women want to keep working. But we tell you, if a woman who has the financial means to keep working uh, and the financial means to have daycare ability can also exist under our work. But at least under our work, they get forms of benefits that is very exclusive and can only work, right? Which means we tell you the majority of Asian women are actually people who want to have families. These families their values are very culturally ingrained within the values, right? But the reason they care is because there's no uh, benefits that are positive, right? Understand that money does unlock a better benefit. It's true that money is the factor that drives human behavior around the world. But no matter what, financial benefits are obviously the key, right? They never prove to you how exactly continuation of their current job while given infrastructure and uh, the daycare gives you more money. Only thing they prove is that they protect the women who are not scared to find a housewife and suddenly get millionaires. Under their world, not only do they have absent uh, dads, but they also have absent mothers, which means after 10 years, they have people with mommy issues as well as daddy issues, right? Because of that significant because again, number one is affordability, number two is if they can be a good parent to begin with. We tell you that question of good parenting never gets answered under their work. There's a moment they think, oh, I cannot give time to my baby because I'm working to a job. Government does not give me any benefits. How can I even give time to my baby, spend time with it? Because at the end of the day, the only way parent and child can have bonding is to spend time. It has to be a lot of time. That is why paid parental, that's why parental leave maternity leave exists. So that people can have bonding, people, children and parents can have bonding to begin with. Never happens otherwise. Two questions, are people actually in this world struggling? They tell you they're rich as well. We tell you that's not true. We, I told you in my very first speech mm -hmm. that we're talking about working class individuals. Working class are obviously struggling. If they didn't struggle, they would obviously retire early, which is obviously not the case in Japan and South Korea, which means it is true that they are struggling to have a, enough amount of money to not even retire early and stuff like that. We told you that because of the fact that they're struggling, financial affordability is a big question that still exists under their, uh, under the work. But at, at the end of the day, we tell you that at least we get more time next like forever and we solve the incentive issue by giving money. Money at the end of the day obviously drives every human behavior. So they, they cannot give infrastructure to trumps money. And because I believe in my part two.